What's up, Tube? You guys got the tech guy coming at you today with a little more gun content, and today we're going to be talking about the new Springfield Echelon pistol. So let's jump into this thing and uh, see how this new pistol from Springfield does. All right, guys, before we jump into this video about the new Springfield Echelon, I wanted to tell you that this video is brought to you by Barbell Apparel. And we partner with Barbell because they create great products, they're great people, and they stand for great values. Now, here in Georgia, it should be jean season, and some days it is, but some days it ain't. And Barbell Apparel's got you covered regardless of what it is. Today, I have on the relaxed athletic fit jeans. Those are probably my favorite line of them. They're just wide enough at the bottom to go over the top of some shoes or boots that you have, uh, but they're not so big that it's a boot cut and you gotta have a cowboy boot on or some kind of bigger boot for it to make sense to wear them. So the relaxed athletic fit jeans are my favorite ones. This is the Havoc t-shirt. This is a little bit thicker than the ultralight tech tee. So it's a great kind of winter time or shoulder season shirt uh, that still has great technical material that you can get out and sweat in and it's gonna do its job. So go check them out at barbellapparel.com and support the companies that support 3 of 7 Project because that's what allows us to get out here and buy these guns with our own money and review them and give you guys an honest opinion about them. So thanks Barbell for supporting 3 of 7 Project and for sponsoring this video. All right guys, so let's jump into this new Echelon pistol from Springfield. Now, this is a duty style pistol, all right? This is not something that you're gonna be concealed. I mean, you could conceal carry it, but there's better options out there today for concealed carry guns. So this isn't anything that you're gonna be trying to put you know, in the waistband. This is a duty style pistol. This is something that you would carry out of the waistband, maybe in some kind of pancake style holster. You could conceal it pretty good in the winter uh, under a coat or something like that, depending on the holster you used. When I'm looking for one of those, when I'm looking for a duty style pistol that's gonna fill the needs of the, the things that I just mentioned, there's a few things that I look for. One is some good sights. So I like metal sights. I don't like the Glock plastic sights that come on there. They're freaking trash, man. Those Glock sights, the stock ones, they're trash. They're plastic, they're just a they're piece of crap. So I'm looking for some good metal sights and this gun has those. It's got the U-notch rear sight like comes on the Hellcat if you guys have one of those or have looked at one of those. And it's got a glow in the dark front sight. That's also important to me if I'm looking for a duty style pistol. I want some night sights on it. And so this checks the box there. Uh, I like some good positive grip here on the slide. Deep cut serrations and this has the best serrations of any other gun I've ever shot in. As far as you, you know being deep allowing for good positive grip even if you had gloves on and at the back it's got these kind of ears on it that should something slip it's going you're going to be able to catch it right there so we got good sights we got some good slide serrations there uh, i'm looking for some good aggressive grip texture because this isn't anything that's going to be rubbing up against my skin it's not anything that i'm concerned with causing problems in other areas as i carry it because it's going to be in an out of the waistband holster or maybe it's just riding around in your truck or on your nightstand. And this has pretty aggressive grip, but I don't know, we'll see how it does out here. Um, I think it could probably be a little bit better, but maybe that's nitpicking it. I don't know, I just like really aggressive grip uh, on something that, that, uh, that I can have it on and it's not gonna rub me all day because I'm concealing it. So there's a lot of good things going for this gun. This isn't gonna be a reliability test today. There's some really good ones of those out on YouTube already that will do a much better job than I'm going to do today about this. Uh, this is just gonna be a, hey, Blake like this pistol and I'm gonna tell you guys what I think about it. So we're gonna get out here and run some drills with it and see how it does and um, see if I end up liking it or not. All right, so the first test I wanna run on this thing is just an accuracy test. I think that's important that you do with all pistols that you have. And you might say, well, that's silly, Blake. That's a duty style pistol. It's not, a, it's not an accuracy, you know, a gun you're out here trying to nail bullseyes with. You just need to be a, have a general accuracy, maybe hit a, 
a fist size target. But I would disagree with you, uh, and especially as it pertains to shooting at distance. So you can get up here on the five and seven yard line all day long and, and just hammer the target and, and you're good to go. But you back up to 25 yard and, and half of you don't even know where your gun's hitting back there. And, and you'd think, well, I just hold dead on. It's only a matter of maybe 20 yards different or less, but that actually affects many guns uh, as far as how they hit and where they hit for elevation. So with my Glock 34, I have to aim low. If I wanna hit, say, the head of this target here, I'm gonna have to lollipop it. So my sight post is gonna be at the bottom of what I wanna hit. But then with some other guns, you can just hold dead on and it's good to go. So I wanna test that and see where point of aim versus point of impact is with this gun. Today we're gonna to be shooting on this white silhouette that you see behind me here. Now this is a really cool target. This target is made by Infinite Design and it's their Infinity Target. So it's a 100% rubber target. It's self-healing. They say that it'll take up to 110 shots from a 5.56 per square inch before it starts actually putting holes through it and, and deteriorating the target, which is pretty impressive. This is really cool. For 99% of the people out there, this is a, a do-it-all target. The cool things about this, uh, with it being rubber, obviously if you're doing uh, you know, shooting from retention or maybe you're doing some sort of CQB work, you don't have to worry about the frag that you'll get from steel. So I love shooting steel. It pings, it gives immediate feedback, but the downside to it is that you get the frag from it. So when it hits and your bullet frags apart, sometimes that'll come back and hit you and cut you. It ain't the end of the world, but look, if you ain't got to deal with it, then, then that's good. You also get to see where your shots are here. Yeah, you paint the target, well, it comes painted white. After you shoot it a bunch, you repaint it white, and then you can see where I've already shot it some, so you can tell where your shot goes. Unlike uh, paper, you can leave this one out. It's poured down rain the past two days. It come down here, left it out, it's all fine. You leave some paper up, it's just gonna get wet and fall apart. And so it's just a really cool target. And uh, I'm gonna keep shooting this thing and it serves its purpose. Steel has its purpose, paper has its purpose, but this is a good third option to have out here uh, because it's weatherproof, because it's self-healing and it'll last so long. So that's what we're gonna be shooting on today. All right, so let's start this accuracy test with this Springfield Echelon. I'm gonna shoot the little red circle there on the head of the silhouette. I'm gonna start it at about seven yards and I'll shoot three to five shot group, make sure that it's on, and then I'm gonna back up to 25 and shoot three to five shots as well and see if I need to adjust where I aim as I back up in distance. All right, so there was four shots right there. I think they were all in this red dot. I might've threw one. I think I threw one a little bit over to the right here, but I felt that when I, when I just pulled the shot. So three shots right in the circle, dead on. So we're good to go. I'm gonna back up to 25 yards and see how this does. All right, so just like my Glock 34, we had to aim low. I was aiming uh, considerably low. That's uh, probably aiming somewhere down right here around maybe upper chest neck area on this silhouette. And you guys saw my shots were still were still a little bit high, um, but I would call that I would call that good. Uh, so 25 yards, if you've got the Springfield Echelon, you need to aim a little bit low at 25. Get out and do your homework, do your practice, because it's important to do that if you're gonna be carrying the dang thing around. So let's move into another drill, and uh, this will just be mag change. So I just wanna play around with these slide serrations, uh, see how it does with the mag change. So we'll run through a few reps of that.
All right, right there we had a little hiccup when the slide dropped. The uh, the, the bullet was pushed down and actually hit the front of the mag, so it cleared up when I racked the slide again. But uh, let's see if it does that anymore. On that one, the slide dropped forward. I like a gun that does that, uh, but it has to be reliably. You can't always count on it. It did that again. So I insert the, the mag and try to drop the slide. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but I might stop the video and try to take a picture. But you can see right there the bullet is pushed down and it's hitting the front of the magazine. That's the second time it's done that. So the slide's trying to go into battery, but the round is stopping it because the bullet is hitting the front of the magazine. I'll stop the video and take a picture of it. All right, so I stopped and got you guys some pictures of that. Um, I haven't fixed it or fooled with it yet, so let's just rack the slide again and see if it does anything. Yeah, so as soon as I pulled the slide back, the round came off the front of the mag, but I racked it the first time and it didn't do it. So I don't know if maybe it's just this magazine, but um, let's keep running. Let's keep running some drills with it. I'll intentionally keep that magazine separate and then try a different one here in a minute. Running pretty smooth now. Finish out this, this mag here with it. All right, both of them are empty. Did it again with a different magazine. Y'all saw I racked the slide there, it didn't go in. I hit the button and it won't fall out. But when I pull the mag out, the slide goes forward. Didn't chamber around. Let's keep running this. Uh, there, I slammed the mag home, the slide went forward, but it didn't chamber around. I'll show you guys. No round. Did it again. Slammed the mag home, slide went forward, didn't chamber around. The mag seated. At least it worked that time. I'm just gonna run this another time. One more time. It's giving me enough problems to not like it already. All right, well, I'm gonna quit at that. It's, uh, we had, I don't know, yeah, maybe we did 
10 or 12 reps, something like that. And we had maybe four or five malfunctions there. Sometimes you'd slam the mag home, the slide would go forward and wouldn't chamber around. Sometimes you'd slam the mag home, rack the slide, and then the bullet, the tip of the bullet, ends up hitting the front of the magazine, causing it not to chamber the round, and you gotta rack the slide again, and then it, then it works. And then sometimes you slam the mag home, and it chambers around, and you're good to go. So a bunch of kind of inconsistencies there. We'll run one more test with this thing. I just wanna run a mag dump into the target here and just kind of see how it manages recoil and then we'll wrap this thing up. All right, so the last drill I wanna run here is just a mag dump. We call it the now drill here at 307. So it's just a full mag dump, mag change, one shot. Let's see if uh, this thing gives us any other reasons that we shouldn't be trusting it. All right, here we go. Well, she ran good there. No malfunctions, the mag change went fine. So uh, that one worked out all right. All right, the Springfield Echelon. Initially, I really liked this gun. I liked a lot of things about it. The slide serrations, the sights, all the things we went over were really good. Uh, and even the grip texture, I said at the beginning, I thought maybe it's not quite enough. And that mag dump that we did, it was good, it was sufficient. And even this little shelf they put on the frame with the texture kind of helps manage the recoil a little bit with your thumb. You can lay it up there and just apply a little bit of downward pressure to help manage that recoil. That worked fine. But the number one thing any gun has to do is be reliable all the time, every time. Of course, they're gonna be flukes, but when I experience something that's a malfunction even if it's a fluke I, I can't trust it anymore and i was going to say at the end of this video i was going to tell you guys who should buy this gun who should buy the springfield echelon who's it good for why should you own one and the answer to that is nobody <laughs> nobody should buy the springfield echelon because in my opinion it sucks if it works fine, it shoots, but if you ever had to do a mag change, I don't know that I could trust it. And the short little time, the short few mag changes we did, we had so many problems with it. And I wasn't doing anything wrong as far as you know the fundamentals of marksmanship and the fundamentals of mag changes and shooting and all of that. It just wasn't working. So, sunset Springfield. I was really excited about this pistol. I uh, I was wanting to change from Glock to this, and every time I always want to change from Glock to a new duty style pistol, it never holds up. Nobody does it better for longer than Glock does. So good job, Glock. I appreciate you guys tuning into this video. If you liked it, drop a comment. Tell us what you liked about it. Maybe you got a different experience with the Springfield Echelon. Uh, that's good. I, I imagine there are a lot of good ones out here. Maybe I just got a lemon, I don't know. But, lemon or not, I can't trust it. So this might be something good if you just want to strictly come out to the range and shoot, but I would never trust my life with it. So thanks you, thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.